welcome to Furniture Fables. Industrial Rustic. When taken to its extremes, it's more like industrial rust. A rusty, clunky, chunky monkey. And it may even turn a corner from there and head down a very dark style corridor where industrial rustic meets with dungeon design. But never fear, friends, for where there is a furniture fabler and a pair of pliers, there is a way out of this dark dungeon and back into the light. Ah, here are my rusty, chunky monkeys now. This is a pair of nightstands I picked up for free. And as you can see, they are into metal. Yeah, that's quite the suit of armor they are sporting. I honestly cannot remember the last time I saw so many grommets and pretty rusty grommets at that. The nightstands had also been covered in a very thick dark stain that was pretty blotchy and set within this blotchy stained rusty metal field their pulls seemed to resemble a dungeon's door knocker. And so, ready to release these rusty relics from their dungeonous design, I began. I started by removing the doors and the drawers. And now to remove this door's armor, but where to begin? It took a little trial and error, but I found that with my painter's tool, my chisel, and pliers, I was able to get the job done. To give you a sense of how long that job took, well, here I am getting out those faux center pull mounts and the pull itself sped up to twice the speed. So we get chipmunk hilarity as well. Yes, quite the adventure. And I find it does help to sing to the objects you're trying to remove, too. You know, you want to encourage them. Okay, I soldiered on, removing the metal accents from the first nightstand's drawer front, and then I realized this. That was a good amount of work. And guess what? Now it's round two. That's the fun thing about doing a pair of nightstands. There's two of them. <laughs> Yep, time for round two. So we'll speed this one up here. And here is my new collection of metal bits. Hmm, maybe I can build something with this. Okay, time to clean. Here's a remote control for something. And did you spot it? Yep, something shiny in there. It's a fork. Yep. <laughs> Okay, I am going to be using some crud cutter. This is a TSP alternative, uh, but yes, I should still be wearing gloves. That's always a good idea. Ooh, forgot to take those door stops off. There we go. And then I scrubbed all of that dungeon dirt off of these former captives. Time to sand. I grabbed a 100 grit and I started in on one of those tops, 
For what I had in mind for these nightstands, I wanted to try and see if I could bring back those currently very dark tops to their more natural color. I'm not expecting this wood to be particularly high quality. I'm anticipating kind of a wide variation in color tones in the wood, but I think that will work with this more refreshed natural look that I'm going to go for. Then I grabbed my foam abrasive and my detail sander and I gave that very thick, very ridged top edging a good sanding as well. I was fine with some of that darker stain remaining because my approach with these two was to try and work with their very unrefined vibe. Then I gave the rest of the two bodies a good scuff sanding with a 220 pad. Any major scratches I sanded out, but I didn't really worry about going for perfection here. And I decided I am not going to use any filler. That's correct. I'm gonna leave lots of little imperfections and I'm gonna leave all of the holes from those metal accents. I think it's going to work with the character of this piece. It's hard for me. You know I like my wood filler. You know I like my Bondo. <laughs> But I, I, uh, I, I'm going to try. Then I gave the doors and drawer fronts their sanding, erasing those 10 lines from their armor and getting the majority of that dark stain off. Okay, I am starting off by painting the bodies with some all-in-one paint in a warm, creamy color. I believe this is Sandcastle by Dixie Bell. I decided to use this kind of as a pseudo primer. So I was not really worried about bleed through. Something about my spidey sense was saying that was not really gonna be an issue with this wood. And because I'm not trying to create a perfect, sleek, clean, consistent finish to work off of, I really didn't feel the need for that, for that primer with a shellac base in it. With this paint as kind of my base coat or primer, if I ended up wanting to do some relief sanding or distressing, I wanted that warm, creamy tone to be underneath as something that I could work with. I did two coats of that creamy color, and then I used it to give a paint wash to the doors, the tops, and the drawer fronts. I only wanted to leave just the lightest little bit of the wash behind. This was not a heavy wash at all, just barely toning the wood here. So you can see that I am using my spray mister bottle and I'm wiping back quite a bit of it, quite a lot of it, and using that misting bottle to keep that paint moving, keep it from settling. Okay, once the doors were dry, I got out this. This is a beautiful transfer by Redesign with Prima called Antonia. 
Yes, I had promised myself that I was really going to go for it here and wake these nightstands up with something special. So I measured these papers out and then I peeled off those pre-cut pieces and then used that applicator stick to rub the transfer onto each of the four panels in both of the doors. When you're doing a transfer, you always want to keep an eye on the paper that you are pulling up. If you see any little bit of that transfer still stuck to the paper, you simply lay it back down in place and rub until the transfer lets go. Then you want to gently burnish the transfer, making sure all of those little edges are securely attached. I really love this look of this botanical, kind of illustrated botanical print over this very natural wood. Pretty. Okay, next color, this is Bayberry by Fusion, a beautiful dark earthy green and a real favorite of mine. I have done a buffet in it and our coat rack that we currently have in the front hall is painted in this color. I did it about four years ago and it still looks amazing. It's in great shape. I gave both the nightstands two coats of Bayberry. Oh, I love this color. And then I set one of the doors into place and I stood back and I took a look at it. And, oh no, oh shoot. Something about the coloring was off and I had this weird feeling that perhaps the answer to my problem was right under my nose. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think this is it. This is lichen, a very close match to my new Hanes for Men sweatshirt. And yeah, as much as I don't relish painting a third color, that was not my plan originally. I think it's the way to go. In my opinion, lichen is one of the unsung heroes of the green family. When sage became all the rage, sorry for the rhyming, Lichen may have been kind of overlooked in the fusion color palette, but it is a great version of a sage color because there is not a hint of mint in it. And there's some rhyming again. It doesn't read as pastel, in my opinion, at all. It's very earthy, very herbal, while still being a light, fresh, sagey green. It's got just enough gray in it. So to help me along, because it was kind of raining outside, I used a hairdryer. This is a great trick if you need help getting your paint to dry more quickly. I did three coats of lichen, and then I pulled out this soft tonal lavender floral print 
that I would decided I wanted to use on that bottom shelf. I thought that soft lavender would look really pretty with the lichen and then I touched up the edge with some more paint. Okay, time for some new hardware. I grabbed these adorable pumpkin poles and decided I wanted to warm them up a bit. So I gave them a quick scuff sanding and then sprayed them in this antique gold spray by Ace. I sprayed the hinges as well and once everything was dry I attached those doors and then I did a little bit more retrofitting. I had already sanded the edges of the doors somewhat and they just needed a tad more in order to fit well. Okay time to top coat. This is some top coat in matte by Fusion and I'm going to use their applicator sponge and I also have a couple of good skinny brushes which I really like to use when I'm doing detail work like those door fronts. I gave the top coat a gentle swirling and then lightly sprayed my applicator sponge with my misting bottle. Dipped it into the top coat, kind of gently scraped off the excess, and then I applied it in a back and forth motion to the two tops and the side edges. Then I grabbed my little flat brush and I applied the top coat over all of the transfers as well as all of the woodwork on the doors and the drawer fronts. You didn't think we were done, did you? <laughs> oh, those little doorstops, I forgot about them. They also needed their own little sanding job, little mini sanding job, and they got some top coat too. Then I installed our new hardware, and for a little special surprise, one more hit of flora on the inside of each of the drawers. I often refresh drawers by sanding them and using a scented wax. That's a lovely way to give them a refresh. These drawers were in pretty good shape. Another great way to refresh them is to just give them a fresh top coat. And this little surprise on the bottom of each of the drawers will just give us a little bit more fun, a little more character. Okay, do you remember our not so swell nightstands? Trapped in a cold, dark place, burdened with heavy layers of armor. 
longing for a way out? Well, here they are. Now. Good morning! Glowing in their new soft shade of sage and natural wood accents. Our once rusted relics seem to be walking on air. With just a few warm hardware accents, the only sign left of that old armor are the small scars that somehow seem to add to their imperfect beauty. And those doors, they seem to remind us of all the light, the warmth, and the freedom that is waiting just outside of them. So how much did this rusty rescue cost me? Well, those nightstands of course were free. I spent about $25 on paint all in. Six of those new knobs were $24. And I'll say another $15 for sandpaper, thread cutter, a little bit of wallpaper, some top coat, bringing my total out of pocket cost to $98. So what will I list them for? Well, as it turns out, redone nightstands, a pair, a pair, seem to do actually pretty well in my area. Although I will admit most of them seem to trend towards the modern styling and these are not them these are not that these sort of sort of cottagey earth earthy earthy cottage earthy artist cottage an artist in a cottage in a forest on the earth I, I don't know something like that so I think I'll try to do a tad more research before I list them but for now I am thinking that a list price of 450 for the pair seems feasible so what did you think are you running joyfully through the green fields with me or are you missing those dramatic metal accents? Leave me a comment and let me know. Like if you liked it and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future daring rescues. I hope wherever you are, you are beginning to see the signs of spring and whatever has been weighing you down, you are stripping off, leaving behind you and emerging renewed. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I will see you next time for more Furniture Fables.